What started as an informal network of breakfast meetings turned into an international movement. Uh, now there are over 500 organizations that are part of Remake Learning um, uh, regionally. Uh, and again, these involve museums, libraries, schools, after-school organizations, funders, businesses, technologists, all kinds of different organizations that are coming together and garnering international attention for the work that, are do that they're doing in the Pittsburgh region. And they're all working together to create engaging, relevant, and equitable learning experiences for the kids in our region. By engaging, what do I mean? I mean that kids are actively building and constructing knowledge. They are not passive recipients. They are actively participating in the learning process. By relevant, I mean that learning is, is uh, relevant not only to a student's passions and their interests and their community and their context, but it's also relevant to the demands of a 21st century workforce. And by equitable, we mean that the students that need the most support and resources get the most support and resources. I'm hoping to explain to you a little bit as I end my presentation about how we created our network, how we sustain our network. And in the service of that, I hope to grow ours with all of you. But I also hope that we can start to think about how you can start a network um, and how that might grow for you as well. So here's my first tip, build on your strengths. What about, what makes your region unique? What makes your city unique? What about its identity, its history, its culture, its institutions gives it unique ability and strength to serve its children in innovative ways? Be audacious. Be bold. Uh, we don't have time to wait. This system of listen, memorize, test, repeat is failing too many students. So how do we make sure that we're getting out there and doing bold things and not being afraid of change or being afraid of risk? How are we making sure um, that the crazy ideas get a chance to sprout and grow into something amazing over the course of your entire community? Having a brand, an umbrella for people to identify with that is neutral, that is positive, is uh, a huge step that we took forward in 2010 and 11. And I always say um, it's really important to get that as a next step once you're having these informal conversations. Um, they made sure that there was catalytic funding of between five and $10,000 so that folks, educators, technologists, um, people in the network could start testing out their ideas in very small ways so that they could grow. Um, they also started doing a lot of the larger convenings under the umbrella of this new brand um, and uh, website and social media and everything that goes with that. We started with folks who are ready. So we started with superintendents who were already thinking in forward ways um, and said, how do we support you in ways that can really accelerate your work? Um, and we started to implement, so the first thing that we did in, very early on in the network was that we supported a lot of um, technology enhancements in any way that we could, right? So maker spaces, 3D printers, iPads, computers, um, things that would increase the digital ability of schools. And we want students to be actively engaged in their learning, and we want to trust students to be able to do that. Um, I have found in this work that it's really hard for adults to trust students. And you can't customize learning to students. You can't um, let them really be active and explore and engage in interdisciplinary and active ways unless you trust them um, to be able to do that. And so that's a big step. And again, that's something that we talk about both in our mission and vision of the network, but also um, we hope that our network partners are promoting um, this idea when they're delivering professional learning, for instance. It's far too easy in this day and age to just sit students in front of the computer and let them go. Um, and so we, again, in the Remake Learning Network, are really trying to encourage this idea that it's not about the shiny object. It's, n it's not about these awesome tools and technologies in themselves, um, in and of themselves. I think a mistake that we make is we say, oh, this thing is really cool. Let's put on this virtual headset, and it's going to be awesome. But what learning is actually coming from that necessarily? Now, learning can come from that. That's actually why we started Remake Learning Days, because what we really wanted to do was have a massive marketing campaign to parents and families to get them to come out and experience a very different type of learning themselves, themselves and with their children, to see, wow, I, you know, when I'm doing this um, hands-on uh, coding or robotics um, project, 
and the educator is there supporting, but it's a very different type of environment. Uh, wow, I'm actually, this is really hard, and I'm actually learning in a way that's very different from the way I used to learn, but I'm learning more, and I can see my student is so engaged, and my student is learning and interested. Um, and there's this really interesting change that happens in parents and families when they themselves experience the change.